17. Here we go. A sip of my coffee. Hi guys, this is Puppy UK for EveCopilot.net, and today I'm going to do a brief overview of the different types of ship in Eve. Now, I'm not going to go over them all in incredible detail because it would just take so long, but um, if you have any specific questions, feel free to come and ask me. Um, but what we're going to do is just go over each different class of ship the variants of them and, and roughly what they're used for. Now, some ship classes do vary from race to race and some do have vastly different roles, but we're just going to give you a, a brief overview of each different ship type, just to give you, hopefully point you maybe in the right direction if you're looking for what to train into next. So, we will start off with the frigates. Frigates are basically the smallest ships in, in, in EVE really. They're the basic frigates are or the standard frigates, sorry, are basically only used by new players and by scouts. Scouts um, use frigates with micro warp drives fitted and they will then basically go ahead of their fleet and, and watch ahead before the main fleet lands. Um, the idea being that they're very quick and manoeuvrable. They can get away if they need to, if they jump into trouble, or they can try and catch someone very quickly and hold them there while the rest of the fleet arrives. Uh, the advanced frigates, you have assault ships, which are basically um, just frigates on crack. So they're tech two holes, so they have a lot more resistances, a lot more firepower. They're just generally a beefier, like a better version of the uh, of the tech one frigates. Then you have cover ops. Cover Ops are basically um, scanning, um, either scanning ships or bombers. So you get the stealth bombers which can, can warp around cloaked, they can go through Black Ops bridges and they can drop bombs. They're great fun and extremely effective if you can use them properly, but flying them well needs a very good FC and some very good coordination. And then also your scanning ships, which will help you, um, um, which will help you scan down various types and players and so on and so forth. They can also warp around uh, stealthed. So that's it for the frigates. After that, we're going to go on to the cruisers. Well, let's not. Let's go on to the destroyers quickly. Um, destroyers, uh, the basic standard destroyers, are basically all designed to be quite high DPS, quite low tank. They're very, very good. Um, they're very, very good damage for for the cost. I think that you know some of them you can fit them for two or three million isk, and you can put out you know over two, two fifty, three hundred DPS out of these things, which is pretty amazing. Some of them have some specific roles. Again, like I was saying before, so like the Amar has um, like energy vampire bonuses. I think the Algos has something quite special somewhere. Mm, maybe not micro warp drive speed and stuff. But yeah, they're basically very high damage um, ships that, that probably aren't going to live too long under under fire. You also have interdictors under destroyers, which is the uh, the Tech Two variant, and these are basically bubble ships. They have the ability to launch a bubble in nullsec, in no security space, which will stop anyone inside that bubble from, from warping anywhere. And then so they can fly into the middle of a battle, drop this bubble, and then fly off. And anyone that's inside that bubble is then going to be like having a warp disruptor on them, so they can't get anywhere. Um, really fun ships. If you want to get into Nullsec, if, you, if you're looking to get into 0 0 second into the Alliances, becoming a good Dictor pilot is a really good way to get in there. Um, but yeah, they're lots of fun. I, I really love flying Dictors. You can also go very wrong and, and bubble your own fleet, which will get you in a lot of trouble. Um, moving on to cruisers. Cruisers are basically just the, the next logical step up from frigates. So they're going to have a little bit more hit points. They're going to be a little bit, they're a little bit bigger, so they'll be a little bit slower. They'll do a little bit more damage. In some cases, a, a fair amount of damage, and there's also a lot more variation. 
they've brought in logistics cruisers now so you have repair or healer cruisers which um, I believe is yeah this Agora and there's another one um, the Moa the Osprey yeah so you have logistics you also have some E-Wall um, cruisers <coughs> excuse me which is um, again this is where I was saying about having the different races so, for example, the Amar has an armor repair, two damage cruisers. So this is like a tank. So you have a tank, sort of a tank cruiser, a damage dealing cruiser, a logistics cruiser, and uh, an E-War cruiser. So this one gets um, the Amar version is armor logistics, and the Amar E-War is um, tracking disruptors. If we then nip to Kaldari, um, there. Their E War is ECM. Their um, there you go. Their their logistics is shield. And then you go on to Galanti. Uh, I don't even think they have. Yeah. So you got a drone boat, a uh, DPS boat, a logistics, and sensor dampening. So you can see they are like the ECM, especially is very different, um, and they better cost target painting. And again, I think Scythe is shield again, yeah. So basically, um, each of these four, as a general rule of thumb, have you know E-War, Logistics, Tank, and DPS as, as a general rule. Um, and they're all, you know, you can put some really good frigate, um, sorry, you can put some really good cruiser fleets together with the standard cruisers. They're really cheap, they can work really well, um, but the newer players need to put some time into training for them. You can't just get into a low skill cruiser and expect it to be really good. You need to get some of the skills in on the uh, the medium sort of gear. So the medium weapons, the medium tank, the medium everything. Um, but yeah, I really like them. Going on to the advanced cruisers, we have the heavy interdictors, which are very similar to the uh, advanced destroyers, where they run in and drop the bubble but instead of running in, dropping the bubble and running off, the bubble actually stays around the heavy interdictor. So anywhere they go, the bubble f stays with their ship. It also has the additional option of um, having what's called a focused or an infinite point, and that actually has the ability to keep um, carriers and capitals and super capitals and titans uh, warp disrupted. Super, super carriers and titans aren't affected by normal um, electronic warfare so they have to be uh, used with a heavy interdictor we've also got the logistic ships um, the, all the sub capital logistic ships are or sorry all the, the best sub capital logistic ships are all cruisers um, obviously you can use the tech one versions as well but the tech twos are the ones that you uh, that you really want and these are basically the, the, the logistics, the best logistics in the game if you're talking about sub-capital ships so um, you have two shield and two armor logistics, Kadari Galanti are armor and uh, Kadari Mimitar are shield and you have heavy assault ships, heavy assault ships are basically cruisers on crack the same way that um, the destroyers sort of, sorry the um, the assault ships are frigates on crack, the, the heavy assault ships are, can do some exceptional stuff. Uh, for example, the Zealot with a mark and can shoot out uh, from from 100k with a, with about four or five hundred DPS. Really good stuff. A lot of the big alliances, big Nolsec alliances, use uh, use the heavy assault ships frequently, or at least used to. Um, recon ships are quite unique. Um, they basically play quite specific roles and again come back to the E-War that we saw at the cruiser level so you can see um, stasis web fires bonus to stasis webs, bonus to stasis webs um, oh, excuse me uh, yeah bonus to warp scrambling range which can be really really good um, where you can sort of point people out to sort of 60, 70, 80, 100 K. The Kaldari get electronic warfare, which is basically jamming, which stops people being able to target. Uh, and Amar gets energy neutralization, 
which basically just drains the enemy's cap. Um, they also get 50% um, reduction, this is all recons, get 50% reduction to Sinosaur fields, um, for, which is for jumping capitals, and I believe they can also go through Black Ops jump bridges as well, like the Stealth Bombers. And you have Strategic Cruisers, which are Tech 3 Cruisers, which are basically, I'm going to go into like a whole different Explaining Tech 3s is a whole separate video, but basically they're very expensive but highly customizable ships. So they can be everything from logistic ships to very high DPS to extremely high tank ships, depending on how you configure them. The ship you can actually build the ship in in in, a, in, a, in combinations of hundreds of different combinations to to change the ship to customize it to how you want it to be. I'll do a completely separate video on the Tech 3s, but um yeah, do look look for my Tech 3 video for more information on them. Once we're done with the cruisers, we are up to battle cruisers. Now, the standard battle cruisers are basically the step in between <coughs> from cruisers to to battleship. Um battle cruisers are mainly used um, either as very high DPS sort of glass cannons. So the Oracles, the newer, the, the Nagas and the Talos are, are very high DPS, very low tank ships. They're, they're used in, in no second large numbers, but they're, they're, well, I say they're new, they're, they used to be new, or they're used as mission ships. Um, the Harbring of the Drake, um, the, the Munin are, are all sort of level 3 mission runners. And they're for people that are, are done with the level 2 missions, but they, they can't afford the battleships yet. So you, you get the battle cruiser, you do the, the level 3 missions in, in them. Then you also have the command ships, which is the advanced version. Command ships are basically used to give bonuses, or used to be used to give to give bonuses to to fleets. You can you can fit command modules which will give people extra agility or extra speed and so on and so forth. But these days you can do the same thing with the previously mentioned Tech Three ships, so they're not used so much. But the command ships do have massive tanks. Um, the uh, the night some of them when they're set up properly with the right skills can tank an incredible amount of damage. Um, just make sure I haven't missed anything with these. I don't know what they're for reduction in capacity use. Yeah, it's the warfare link modules which enables them to give bonuses to their fleets, but that's what they're for. They they basically stay alive, get bonuses out to the fleets. Once we're done with the battle cruisers, we'll go into the battleships. Um, standard battleships are either used in PvP as um, in a variety of different fits, or, or level 4 mission running. Well, um, they're very popular for level 4 mission runners, for the PvE side of things. People trying to save up to get into the uh, the advanced battleships, which we're going to a minute, and they're used in, in fleets for big fights in Nullsec, for big fights in high sec. Um, you know, a group of battleships can take a lot of damage, they can give out a lot of damage. Um, used for bashing posses and so on and so forth, but again the skill requirements, the skill count, the amount of skill points you need are quite high because they're using the same as the battle cruisers, they're using large modules for everything, so large guns, large tank, large, you know, large, the whole lot, large rigs especially. They're quite expensive um, for the damage they do, you can use, um, you know, the, the actual damage they put out is, is often not as particularly high for the price. Um, but yeah, for level 4 missions, they're, they're very good, and they can be fit for a few hundred million. You've got two types of advanced battleships. The Marauders are basically mission ships. Um, the bonus with the Marauders, the reason that Marauders make such good mission ships, first of all, they're very, very expensive, but they do make very good mission ships because 100% bonus to... Um, their weapons. Every Marauder gets 100% damage to its weapons, but it only gets half the amount of weapons. What this means is that, you see it has seven high slots, but it only has four turret hard points, which means it has three, it does the same damage as the um, 
standard battleship, but it does it with half the guns, which means you have slots, high slots free for salvagers and um, tractor beams, so you can tractor beam and salvage while you're doing your missions rather than having to come back and do it separately. Um, they also have a better tank, better natural resistances, and I think slightly higher slots than their Tech 1 counterparts, but they're basically the some would argue the best uh, mission ships in the game. Others would say Tech 3s are better these days, but obviously, the, and they are similarly priced. The other type of, but they're basically the Marauders are main, 90% of the time they're used for, for missions. Um, some people use them PvP, but not very often. Um, Black Ops are basically used to um, create the Black Ops bridges we were talking about that stealth bombers and uh, recons and Tech 3 ships can can go through, they can make a bridge from one system to another and, and push people through so uh, yeah, Covert Sinosaur Field Generator and Covert Jump Portal Generators um, which will basically means you can sit in one system with a fleet um, a, a one fleet member 5, 10, 15 um, jumps away can, can light a Covert Sinosaur Beacon and then this, the Black Ops ship can create a portal which will allow the fleet to immediately jump to the other member through this, through the portal. Very useful if used right, used with the stealth bombers to some great effect. Um, they are very expensive, about 800 mil I think for the hull. Yeah, 800, yeah. Um, but very useful, again very advanced stuff. Um, if you're looking to get into the whole Black Ops stuff, I would advise getting into the stealth bomber, letting other people with the Redeemer do the actual Black Ops portaling and uh, and have fun with it that way. Um, yeah, so that's basically the, the tier up to capital ships. Um, I've already done quite a detailed video on the different types of capitals. I am going to do a video on the super capital soon. Now, I'll do a separate video on industrial ships. Uh, which I'll do shortly, but from a PvE and PvP side of things, that's basically full coverage of, of the different types of ships. So, hopefully, that helped you out. I'll do an industrial one, an industrial video, and a capital video shortly, and we'll take you from there. So, thanks, guys, and I'll see you soon.